Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. How'd you like that new little intro? Uh, one of our subscribers sent that to me. Thanks, Sparkplug1. Uh, it's pretty cute. And it's actually one of my favorite songs from a long time ago. It's uh, actually from a movie called Run, Fat Boy, Run. So anyway, I'm the monkey man. Today we're going to be working on this John Deere L130 automatic. This is an older John Deere. And quick history, the guy that brought it to me is actually a regular customer of mine. He's got many machines, he's got a big property. And his father recently passed away. And this was his father's. And he wants to use it, sort of to remember his dad. So he tells me, he brings it to me yesterday, tells me that it's set up here with a starter button turn the key, hit the button, nothing happens. He charged the battery. Uh, what we found so far is we've got no hour meter going on up here. Um, we've got some sort of hanky wiring here. Somebody jammed a wire into a spade connector and it's all cracked and rusted. But uh, the easiest thing to do on this First of all, he's got, see, he's got a brand new battery in there, is to run a lead power from the positive side of the battery down to the solenoid. Now, this is a starter that has a solenoid built in. So I'm going to run power here and see if we can get this thing to kick. If we can get it to spin, then we know it's the brake's not engaged. It's a safety somewhere issue, and I can figure out what I have to sit on and push and do all that if we can't get any juice out of the uh, starter and we can't at least make it spin then we know we got a starter issue so let me get set up okay all i've got here is just a hunk of wire that i have attached with alligator clips to the positive side of the battery it should ground to something if we have a good connection if there's power in the battery. So why is it? There we go. Alright, so if I touch this to the lead on the solenoid, and it, the starter and solenoid are good, it should kick and spin the cylinder, or the, the starter. but I'm getting nothing. Now I'm gonna to touch it to the starter itself. The starter is spinning, but the Bendix doesn't seem to be kicking up to go into the gears on the flywheel and turn the engine. I'm curious as to why that is. We're getting nothing at all when we put it on the positive side of the solenoid, which is uh, not good. If we touch live power to this, it should kick through the solenoid, close that switch, and spin the starter. No matter what, no matter whether the key's on, no matter whether the key's off, none of that will matter. looking I don't know what this wire here is uh, that's coming off of that switch but we're getting nothing but again when I touch it on this side it at least spins the starter so my first guess is the solenoid went bad on the starter I'm gonna pull these two bolts right here and pull the starter out because I want to know why the Bendix isn't kicking up. I don't know how long this thing's been sitting. So we're going to do that real quick. Okay, so what I've got here <clears throat> is I've just hooked a few leads up to a battery, positive and negative. I had to pull the starter off and bring it inside. I don't know if you can see it out there, but we just had a downpour. 
and it's still pretty black up there we're supposed to be getting more so real quick off camera all I did was pull the two bolts out of the starter here and the starter just falls out of place it's easy peasy I took the wires off the bottom and what I found when I did that was that the wires were not hooked up correctly whoever hooked up the wires put the power wire on the solenoid but they also put the power wire from the key directly to the solenoid that's why it wasn't working the power wire from the key goes right here you see the power wire from the battery comes into here and then there's a switch that makes a connection between this post and this post and it when you put power to this it closes that connection and allows power to flow through the starter so that's our problem this bolt is missing and someone twisted that wire around the, the positive or the the first post on the solenoid so what was happening let's see if I can get it in the frame here and show you the reason I pulled this off and it only took two minutes no big deal you can take a negative and put it anywhere on the body and if I put it on the starter itself see that's the problem I'm trying to show you this and show you what it was doing it's sort of a pain in the butt but watch what happens when I touch the starter directly you can hear it spinning but the Bendix is not popping up to make connection with the flywheel and make this thing start now let me see if I can keep it in frame sort of Get it off the edge of the bench where you can see it. And show you what it's supposed to look like. When I take the ground and I put it on the body, and I hit the wire, I hit the connection where the wire is supposed to go. Ow, it gets hot real quick. But you could see that the Bendix sprung up where it was supposed to and spinned. So the problem was someone put... See, I, I burnt the skin off my finger just that quick, that black line. Power cut right into my finger. I hate doing that. Anyway, so the starter and the solenoid are good. So what I need to do is go put it back on. I need to find a bolt, a nut, I'm sorry, that's going to fit here. So I can put the battery side back on here. And I can put our key switch to here. So I'm going to find that bolt or that nut and I'll be right back. Alright, so all I did was find a washer and a nut that will fit on the contact post here. The reason being I found a flared nut that fits and I don't, there's a little piece that sticks out here. So I just wanted to put a washer on there to give it some space so that when I draw the nut on, it will match all the way and I can get that wire back on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Hopefully I'm not walking through a puddle with a lightning strike. Uh, all I have to do, this is the lead from the key. This is the one I'm going to wrap around the post I just put the new nut and washer on. And this is our power wire that goes on the other side and our two bolts go right back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in off camera because it's raining and show you what I get. Okay. <clears throat> so, I put our wire from our contact switch here to the correct post on the solenoid. I hooked our power from the battery back up to the solenoid. I hit the key, or I hit the button up top and nothing happens, okay? But watch this. Hope you're still in frame. Now if I take positive lead from the battery and touch it to the post where the switch is supposed to make connection, watch what happens. Now we're back in business and our engine is turning, which tells me, and there's only two wires connected, it looks to me like this is the one with the hinky connection that's garbage. 
is supposed to be the power coming from down below going to the switch because this other one coming off the switch and there's only two wires is the one that's going directly to here so what I'm gonna do now is take this apart because I have no idea where whoever ran this got the power from this is clearly not from John Deere but we're gonna get rid of this stuff we're gonna strip these out just so I have something to work with ah, it was look it was fried it was missing that's why it wasn't making a connection I went to pull the coating off and half the wire inside was missing from the way that they just jammed it together like that so let's just see if we get rid of that crap connection if we get a switch back I doubt it I don't know where that power is coming from yeah see we're getting nothing the brake is in the locked on position. We're getting nothing. So my guess is that wherever this power line is coming from, uh, it blew a fuse. It's not connected. Let me see. This should be straight power bypassing the fuse. Let me see if I touch this, if it'll spin. Nope. So we're not getting any power out of this at all. And I'm not sure why or how. So again, power can come from anywhere. It doesn't matter. Power can come straight off the battery. So again, I'm going to take this alligator clip. Now I have this line off. It was disconnected from here. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to put a temporary lead straight to the battery and see if we can fix this problem without having to spend a lot more time and money. Now we just have this wire, instead of coming off of the motor somewhere, the mower somewhere in the wire connections, now we're going to see if we can put it straight to the battery with this alligator clip. And now let's see if our switch works. Hey, look at that. So our power wire, wherever that was coming from, was dead. Watch this. Bingo. So the switch is good. The starter and the solenoid was good. That's what we were worried about. All I have to do now is bring this power to this switch from somewhere else. So you know what, honestly, I'm going to see if I have a ring connector and we're going to put it straight to the battery because that's what I've done here. I've just taken that put it straight to the battery. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> all I've done, like I said, was take the positive wire from the switch and run it directly to the battery. This wire right here is dead. So I'm just going to kind of tie a knot in it and cut the end off just in case it's a bad connection and kind of tries to come back later. We're just going to tuck that out of the way. And now when I hit the button, when the key's on, we hit it when the key's off, we're still getting straight power, which is good. The key on, it would start if... I have no idea how long it's been sitting, if it's got fuel in it. But at least now we know our starter issue's fixed.
know she'll start and run. I'm not sure why it won't drive. I took the brake off. It's a hydro. Should be able to push the pedal forward or backward and make it run. But that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to mess with this for a few more minutes and see if I can't get it to drive. I haven't looked underneath. I don't know what I'm missing, uh, but it should drive. Anyway, now push button starter works. Uh, you should be good to go. And you can see that it starts right up and it actually runs pretty good so we don't have to clean the carburetor. So thanks for stopping by. Hit the like button on your way out the door. It's somewhere between my chin and my balls. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon. And this addendum is just for the customer. I figured out why it wouldn't drive. When we took it off your tractor, we couldn't free roll it. So I remember I showed you how to pull that out to disengage the transmission. I pushed that back in and everything's fine. So we'll go ahead and just show you while we're at it. rewired the switch starters good and she drives runs and cuts so you should be happy your dad took really good care of this machine uh, I know there's a little surface rust on it but he actually took good care of the machine so you'll get many more years out of using it and who knows maybe he'll be there on it with you when you ride it so thanks for stopping by see you soon